Yes, what I am, mm -hmm. um, it's interesting, Mr. Brackett, I don't have the text before me, but you made a reference to a part of the Constitution which has to do with protection from torture, mm. inhumane um, and degrading punishment, or such other treatment. Mr. Brackett, um, Mr. Other Brackett, Mr. Morrison, and Mr. Wade, people of Belize, what I am seeing is happening, happening in Belize, no? is that Belize is being pushed over onto, it's like hanging on the edge or already in, on a slippery slope. And our people, our institution of state, our system of law, is founded on the rule of law, which came out of a thousand years recently, mm -hmm. recently, and it has some characteristics which we hold there, and it is wrapped up in the common law and the constitutional law and the guarantees and so on. It's a very thing that is under attack. So you see an experiment with the constitution, and I'm, I'm telling people, those people should leave our constitution alone. So you see this exercise and experiment going and they keep blaming the constitution when any constitution and all system, world class is only as good as the people who protect and the government which should, the constitution implores policies of state which give effect to it. I say that because it's so obvious. But the things that are being mentioned and the things that people are seeing has to do with what is where our country is being lambasted with different things which have to do with a police state. And it must be called out. Mr. Uh, Brackett, you mentioned certain things and with respect to anybody who is hauled up and dealt with a certain way. I want to offer one thing because I say certain things and you know, confronts people that like can't have access to legal recourse, mm -hmm. attorney service, but this country only as good as, you know, the biblical, whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers and our mm -hmm. constitution guarantees that presumption of innocence there's a remedy that is not used enough. And it's called a habeas corpus, mm -hmm. where without all the formalities and the time and so on, a writ of habeas corpus, it's simply put from Latin to English, have the body. A parents can be made or a judge of the high court, formerly the Supreme Court, attention could be caught to have the body of the person before the court. Right. With respect to another thing, there was a situation the other day where, and I don't even like to give voice to it because certain things should not be happening in Belize. And it's more than disquieting where somebody apparently was shot and ambulance did not reach Mm -hmm. policemen were looking on and I maintain that the beliefs we have must protect people mm -hmm. and Mr. Brackett even when you mention that part of protection from inhumane treatment constitutionally presumption of innocence you know how it all ties back in and it's a dignity of the person mm -hmm. it's even a protection of the standard by and the society we can't get such that there is official indifference. Mm -hmm. And I will say this and say it loud and clear. No comprehensive study needs to be conducted by any functionary of police or functionary of state or functionary of government as to who must show up. When anybody is injured, Life is to be saved, 
And the first responders must be, obviously, ambulance. But again, resources of state in the form of police officers, uniformed or otherwise. The tradition of a constitutional country and the rule of law is that you don't have under the guise of indifference or a hurry come up half-baked non-policy because I don't even want to repeat certain things, lest it be, you know, certain things must not, we have a problem that believes, you know, sometimes we repeat that thing when people make up on the spot, right? And the delay tactics and the disregard and so on. It's, I don't, I don't have a word, you know, then they, I, I don't have a word to say for it, no? It just must not be something that we, as a country and a people, ever, 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 let it be other than an affront to our sensibilities as law-abiding people under a constitutional country, which has a rule of law as central feature and something that we will not allow anybody any party, any entity, any government, any political party to feel that they can with impunity and talking both sides of their tongues to pretend that you know what? Life and liberty is not sacrosanct. It's not something that is to be, <laughs> I don't know, Mr. Brackett, people at Belize, there is a time, you know what? When the less said is the best said. It is written large. Belize is in a situation. It's not just a threat. We see the features of police state and danger call for rescue. I always say. Don't you Another thing I want to say, one little example, I want to give a big one. And I see it more and more. Um, one of the constitutional rights, not to incriminate oneself, um, presumption of innocence, silence, right to remain silent. You know what the police say they do now and have been doing? And as they say, up to today and last week, and months before and right in between. When somebody would have already said, you know what, I have my right to remain silent, then go through a motion, they have some forms they look like, and they were, okay, we administer, and we they write it down, time and so on, right? To try cover them back, right? And we give the person a phone call to attorney. You know what they do? And I've been told as an attorney by a policewoman one time up from Queen Street. I attended the station 5.15 or 5.30 a.m. on Saturday morning. The person detained said certain things and he would not give any statement or further statement. I informed the OC, I informed the um, investigating officer and somebody else. Another counsel came and... Um, police right in front of me and I was a senior one although I looked younger and the other counsel was well okay maybe you could give one say I said but the man's instructions are so and so the counsel relented mm -hmm. that was the Sunday morning I get one call the police they look for text statement I call the officer and she was saying well you know what I am conducting an interview and the commissioner of police said that we can conduct. I said, no, no, no. As an attorney, I am reminding you of the constitutional. Oh, but she's going to conduct it. Well, you know what? Something tell me, no, even tell she I up on the way to police station. So foot where you make for. The thing is, they had JP. And I was told again, well, a JP is there. And they had my client there. And I went in and I said, you know what? My, and I repeated in front of the client, and I said to the JP, you know what? You might be here for something. 
Well, my client has indicated, so you might want to stop writing. Then the police officer, well, they just want to take from him that he say yes or no to that. I said my client's presumption of innocence and his constitutional right, as I have advised him, they know his name, they know his date of birth, his age, where he live. They no need to know anything else. I I'll gave a client a card yesterday at Ladyville Police Station. I said, because I understand now how police behave. Interview, you have no right to interview or to question. Uh, at the station last week, I dealt with in Belize City. My clients again, and I explained certain things. The police in front of me when they, they play some shenanigans. Oh, we want to know from your client so and so. I said, give me a minute with him. Of course, we're back in seconds, right? I said, my client said that he will not answer any questions because you know what the police were telling me? They made a try triple bank. I said, better John Kuna dance and that. And that means to make a mockery from our culture and trick people. Um, they just want to ask him some questions. Then one who was in plane, the three of them look like CIB. Oh, two female and a male. Oh, it's simply yes or no. You know what? It was no, 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 no. The policeman may call me today. I identified himself from Ladyville Station. And he said, oh, and he sounded like he made a condescend. The phone connection never so good. So I said, no, 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 my client will not give an interview his constitutional rights. Well, he just won't go through procedure. And he has to do his job as a police and he has to get it done. This was a wrong two because he will would be off as five. I said I made it clear yesterday. Well, he wasn't at the police station yesterday. I left message, of course, for the OC, and I was clear to the police yesterday. I advised my client, give them a card, just say, if they ask you anything, just remain silent and give them a card. I know how they behave. This is a Ali young man attend not just one church, but Adventist and Pentecostal, right? And you know what? I saw the game again, and I said to him, just be patient, wait out. I got an update that he was released by the person who asked me to attend to him, but these things shouldn't be happening. They shouldn't be happening. So the new guys now is interview, torture. That was another thing, you know, Mr. Brackett. Uh, torture could be pretending you are free somebody. And when they walk out of police station hour, just yeah. before the 48 hours end, or at the time, yeah, you call them back in for something. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, lucid um, presentation as well as your personal experience on the spot in terms of these irregularities by our police departments. Some of it I'll Sorry. chalk up to them being ignorant of what the law is, and other parts I'll chalk up to them being outright. And maybe not tonight, Mr. Brackett, but I want to share with Belizeans a matter in the matter of baby D, and that will run through some of the... Okay. <laughs> Uh, but maybe not now it's good, but I'm saying now it comes to mind and it's a week. case. We have, three, and... we have three, three days next week, so mm -hmm. we can mm -hmm. time for that purpose. Thank Remind you, me, like please. I, mm -hmm. and, I uh, will, I will, Miss Pitts. I will. Some of these people, some of these people that we have in our system, from the police officers to the police commissioner and, and his underlings and, and the, and the, and the um, police, you know, even the prime minister, like I said, I mean, why did he have to get himself so worked up to the point of besmirching people out there, the common man on the street? Somebody saying, when they were voting for the man, you know, and he party. To the point where he won't derogate those people's right under his authority because he's our prime minister. Did he forget that, as I asked him in the last show? How he got fed, taken care of as a young man, and was provided for so adequately by his own parents. Did he not believe that the Constitution 
serve the purpose for his parents as well as for these young, as, as well as these other people. But you see, it doesn't affect him now because he's, you know, he's sitting pretty. The fact is that you have to abide by the law. We are a country of laws. And the police officers have to respect the presence of an attorney to deal with their clients. I just read it out of the Constitution just now. And it's not like because I read it out of the Constitution, it should have any more effect. It should have had the effect it deserved to have from the very get go. Police officers who have to take information have to be notified and given the instructions that they cannot demand that people speak when they choose not to speak. And they cannot be sitting there trying to disrespect the attorneys them when they show up on behalf of their client. The Constitution demands that that be taken care of in a different way. But these guys, anyhow, I think I, I'm elaborating ahead of time. I need to let the other individuals on the panel weigh in. Um, Greg, I'll uh, ask Mr. Um, Mr. Gregory Morrison to weigh in for us. And yes. then maybe what you could do, Greg, for me, as soon as Mr. Morrison finish, replay back the same cut that you played earlier, the first one. Just replay it back before you make a comment on it or on whatever is it that we're all commenting on right now, no? Is that all right? Can you set that up? Go ahead, Greg? sir. Okay, yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Morrison, are you the yes. closer? You, you know, I, I, I totally understand uh, what Ms. Pitts was saying, that, that the Constitution, um, it's it's there. and But what it relies on is, it's the, is the goodwill of the people that are responsible there to implement it and and when they fail to do that th th that's where everything is we don't need a new constitution we just need to to have proper conducting of of the order and respect for the constitution by by all the parties and particularly right. those that are responsible for um upholding the constitution uh, but there's something i wanted to find out miss pitts i you, you mentioned it just now about the um changing the the um court from the supreme court to the high court uh, and i know that was done recently but how does that affect anything constitutionally within the country and the if you could just tell me a little bit of why that change was necessary I'll say for the most part, it was a matter of what we would say, nomenclature, name change. And they, there had to be a statute so that you must now say the reference or cite in the High Court of Belize. Remember one time in our history, we used to call Supreme Court, Grand Court, and so on, right? Because and then we have the Supreme Court. Court. The full name is the, was or is, and I still say the Supreme Court of Judicature. So you would still cite that for matters already gone. But uh, to my mind, it's a name change and as well some administrative policies and then the court of appeal. Definitely there, and I would just want to say it with care. So Mr. Morrison, I will have the references and share it very carefully next time. Not so that you now have the court of appeal and administratively, with respect to the judicial officers, right? You have some tweaking of the functioning and so on. But still, the uh, you used to refer, for example, to we have um, our system. You have the stipendiary magistrates, or um, which is unique to Belize in the Caribbean, right? So you had that. And my father did his thesis um, on the Belize uh, magisterial system. So we have the district's court. Mm -hmm. Within that, we ha have the alcohol jurisdiction, but it's limited to $25 and certain things. I think they must mm -hmm. understand that. So in Belize, we have our summary courts are what we call creatures of statute, right? Okay. And we have the district court or we we say the summary jurisdiction um, court so that the district court, all its, um, its jurisdiction has to be prescribed. So we say statutory. So you see, uh, and I had to try and explain respectfully before a person who was 
in the legal field, but from the Caribbean, but not of Belize. And I think the person was getting mixed up. Yeah. So you have that. And then one example would be, you have like the section three, where the court, it states clearly that the court would not have um, jurisdiction with respect to certain matters which could give rise to interest in hereditaments or land, right? But then the Supreme Court had a judge that the court could still go into the inquiry and then would, and it, so it has its limitations. The family court was a special court. That was, um, that's one of Mr. F Honorable Philip Golson's legacy. So you had the family court and then it has some, it's still a magistrate's court level, mm -hmm. but certain things like injunction and protection order, which were just a, purview of the Supreme Court mm -hmm. were afforded to the family court, right? So that like if a man or woman is on a domestic violence, it can enjoin against that and certain other things matters, right? Then the Supreme Court of Judicature is what we call a court of original jurisdiction. And it's also the appellate court from the lower court. So as you go into the court hierarchy upwards, the Supreme Court. Now, the magistrate's court's jurisdiction, apart from the offenses, some petty misdemeanors, and what we call hybrid offenses, some which are all are, would be instituted by information and complaint describing the alleged offense. And then some would be able to, are listed in schedules as what we would call hybrid, so that some would be by indictment or triable at the instance of the police or the DPP, they could go to indictment. It means then that if it's they elect to go without indictment, the charge would be read and then the person enters the plea. It's very important because once you've entered the plea, then you have ultra for acquit or convict and law against what you would call in the US double jeopardy mm -hmm. colloquially. So then a uh, you have as well a limitation on the ability of the magistrate to sentence. I did a silver appeal in the Supreme Court where I didn't do the first instance, but a young man was sentenced to a certain time. And when I looked at it for appeal purposes, I managed to say that there was an error in law because the magistrate would have had to... Um, and they, it would have been through the prosecution, they would have had to uh, seek permission or approval from the Supreme Court to impose the highest sentence. The DPP agreed with me, and that was before the Supreme Court in um, Holden in Belmopan. Now with the high court, original jurisdiction means that you can go before the court for certain things, writs of habeas corpus to have the body uh, the magistrate's court jurisdiction was increased from claims of $5,000 in a civil suit. So I think $20,000, right? The cost of court is limited to $5,000, $5 Belize, or $5, $5 or $4, which is good because I had somebody the other day, a foreign call company trying to get $9,000 cost in family court. And I had to fight that tooth and nail and prevail a certain way. But I think it was in order that they would shield against an appeal to the Supreme Court, which I was quite prepared to do. So, so, so then you have the higher court. I'll finish quickly. Okay. So the, the Supreme Court is a court of original jurisdiction. So certain things like um, dissolution of marriage and uh, injunctions and land matters, libel, defamation, uh, a whole... Anywhere that you would see, you know, um, judicial review of legislation, constitutional matters, and so on, right? Uh, having the body of the person. So the Supreme Court is there across the board. Then you have the Court of Appeal. Now the Supreme Court is the appellate court for the lower court, right? Mm -hmm. And the Court of Appeal, as we call it, is the, the appellate Supreme. court for the Supreme Court, right? And right. still, sometimes the Court of Appeal, when somebody appeals to that court, they might still um, send back the matter for the lower court to hear. 
or the court of appeal might supersede. Then we had the judicial committee of the Privy Council as our final court of appeal, and that was in our law and in our highest law, the constitution. You had some people saying, well, the link from this relic of colonialism, and I think that politicians on both sides were saying to the good people of Belize, it's because of the Privy Council that, that we're not them. hanging. And you know what? Once we hung and hung them high, the problem with them, crime would be solved. There were some of us who were saying the Privy Council is not out there and not closer and not au fait and in touch and that to say hanging, but that was what they put to feed our people and to say, yes, um, the nice. limit. No, there were some of us who feel too, and I still feel, you will look at who sponsors these law. Ironically, Vibes Cartel, a very famous case, is before the Privy Council. The Caribbean law brothers and sisters from the old school in the Caribbean. I think Trinidad, which has the seat of the court, um, Belize and a couple others um, went to the Court of Justice, the CCJ, as the appellate court. Jamaica, which is very nationalistic, it seems that some people feel that, you know what, within their nationalism, and they have a very vibrant, they have vibrant um, law society, you know, law precedent, and they feed the rest of us in the Caribbean, right? But we are second to none, of course, Belize, right? And we are sovereign, but Belize chose to go. Now, the fallacy or the argument, which was, you know what, they will hang. We still are not hanging people, and maybe for good reason. Uh, the thing is that, so sorry, I went on and on, Mr. Morrison, no, but no, 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 to that, deal with the that's jurisdiction that's and the nomenclature and so on, you have to understand the root of these. One of the things is, for example, as law students, we would have been told you had chancery division, right? And you had the Supreme Court. And one of our things in equity was that equity came out of chancery from the king's feet because the chancellor, you would go for a remedy. And it was said that um, the remedy might change or be equal to vary with the length of the king's feet. You know, just like they would talk about palm tree justice and yeah, so on, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So that um, there was Lord Cairns Act and it was said that the courts were fused. So the courts of chancery gave equitable relief. So if you want equity where the strict law construed will not grant a relief. So you have courts of equity, right? So the Supreme Court of Belize is a court of equity and it comes out of our common law from the thousand year history and growth. So we would say uh, that it uh, is fused. So equity, the things like habeas uh, corpus and all the things which afford these rights are remedies of equity and the Supreme Court's original jurisdiction Conscience uh, would allow us to always run to the Supreme Court, no name the High Court. Thank yeah. you very much, Sharon. No, no, I want to ask we're, we're, one point, one point, uh, one point more minute, on that, minute, um, because minute, I sir. wanted to find yeah. out now. I'll yield back, the, I'll yield back, the, um, I'll yield back the um, floor to you, just a second. That is a very good presentation, Sharon, especially for nice. those of us who are involved with these type of issues. Um, but it's very educational also for the general public to have heard what you had to say just now in that regards because a lot of people don't understand Thank you. the mechanics behind us. Uh, please Thank proceed, you. Mr. Mr. Yeah. Um, Mr. No, Morrison. I'm sorry I, about I, that. I, I like getting legal advice for free, so that's why I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> but you what know what? I, I, I no? have... Uh... But um, we have a limit on the show, so we can... Mm -hmm. I know. I know. We have a lot of things. But, that, yeah. what I, want I think just... Mr. Greg Morrison... It is so illustrate, right, for Belizean people, if they don't understand, I go to these presentations on the, cons well, I went to two, but really and truly, I know even, I will not be there, but anybody will want to call me, and I was saying and advising that we should be in session. The Constitution has a lot of conventions, but you see, the thing is, you hear presentations within two 
hours, right? And question and answers and introductory yeah. speech, but really and truly with yeah. respect to your constitution, you can't discuss constitution without going into the roots. So the, the wickedness, <laughs> the evil that is being perpetrated is to suggest to people, you know what? You all weren't a part of this constitution, so get your own constitution. Before any lawyer should be discussing with the public anything about law with the constitution, right? At a presentation like that. And I challenge my brothers and sisters in law, go to the root so that people understand what came out of a thousand years of constitution then they will understand what is at risk what is at stake and why you're not gonna pull that thread and unravel it let me the one serious right matter you know what people have died for it and people prepared to dead for it again and when somebody out there on the street they bleed to death that because they're constitutional protection freedom from inhumane treatment is being sure. disregarded on camera in the face of you and people who know the law from you don't have to know the law to know that because you know what that are the biblical Human lord be attitudes Human the good samaritan Thank you very much. but the man who is uniformed officers of belize people who are paid by country you know run somebody wrong and take long for care in a um hospital police for care people are hospital and then the one fail state you have when you don't have ambulance to reach on time or they know they call call the fire truck first responders all are there for go same time and about police for pro pronounce nobody dead carry the person a hospital medical doctors and personnel must come every life vital every life you can't have i don't want to <sighs> uh, thank you very I much i would Aaron. invite anybody who wants to take a constitutional case there are people out there who would do that on behalf of the country i believe because every citizen's rights only as good as how you protect the least of the person out there indifference is sometimes the guides Sharon. for Sharon. and we don't need any comprehensive Sharon. study Sharon we need a time out for right now please uh Mr um Morrison please take uh, 30 seconds and wrap up what you're um, okay well what 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 I was move on to the yeah, next question. what I was wondering on is is just probably looking at the constitution and looking at the Supreme Court or High Court and their responsibility in interpreting the constitution because it seems to me it seems to me that our supreme court or high court however we want to define it or its name now doesn't play an active role in making ruling and interpretation of our constitution and i was just wondering who then is responsible to do it i respectfully disagree with you mr morrison Okay. I, the Supreme Court is as active as we want it to be. I just illustrated uh, habeas corpus, which is a remedy you don't even need to have right. a long uh, written script. An attorney before the court can invoke that. The courts have, uh, the, but as officers of the court and people before the court, we get that protection. I want to say something, right? Um, we are not people who like God a court, right? But the courts respectfully. And when the courts pronounce, they are the guardians of the constitution. But I want to bring you back to Ali example, right? And look at the police state behavior again, right? With respect to bad word and certain things. And by the way, I mean, as Ladyville police station yard last night, our policeman made a custom bad word. They are like him in the lamb base me on my head side. That's the bad word agent. And I don't, hmm. But um, what you have is, um, sorry, I almost lost my train of thought. Uh, what you have is that in the law, when I read it, and I want to, you good gentlemen, pass it to me. It has, remember that fine and confinement increase for the list of people if you curse them or describe them as you feel they are and so on. You know what I was shocked at? That there seemed to be a lowering of the ability a, a statutory fetter 
a parliament passing a self-serving law where if you are before the court and there is a contempt before the court, the judge of the Supreme Court is limited mm -hmm. to confinement for six months. That to my mind is wicked. That is evil. Because then you know what? You can't place a judge of the Supreme Court a far lower ranking than a po politician or anybody else listed there. And I will say something else as my father always reminded me. We as officers of the court, if somebody is out there maligning a judge of the Supreme Court or certain things, the judge is not to descend into the well, the arena out there. But we have a duty if we are before the court to protect the court in and outside of the court. And you know why we do it? Not because we personally like a judge or otherwise. Because we are upholding the rule of law. And if we who are learned in the law and learning in law don't carry out, those are conventions of the Constitution and those are rights and responsibilities, status, rights, and obligations of attorneys at law, a whole law classes that with respect to legal practice at um the and then in addition you're imbued with the law you know what i was oh, happy uh, sorry, sorry 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 I, I, I do have other sections of the program that i wanted to indulge in and um we will have to like on different constitutional nights ask you to come in and further because we can never learn too much Yes. Or we can actually learn, we can never learn enough because these matters keep changing. And it's nice to have the knowledge, it's nice to have the input. And like I said, this particular program is about educating the public and giving the public.